Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Try, I don't care why, at least we're gonna try to make it through and find a way. Specifically, this is the part we can do. In a way, who? It's me and you. Because this is Air Windows clear coat. Cream, I'm sorry, cream coat. Don't mind me. Things are a little distracting at the moment. If you're American, you know why. Um, we're taking a vocal track like this. At least we're gonna try to make it through and, and adding find a reverb. A way. Who like this. Because remember last week when we dropped, uh, and when I say we, I mean me. Air Windows is one person, it's me. It also, it's open source, so it includes all of you. If you want to do anything with this stuff, then you can become part of it. But last week I put out DRES 3, and I talked about how we could take the uh, undersampling thing and that I had come up with a new way of doing it where it got you a really nice sort of softer tone. And DRES 3 specifically, what it does is it lets you use that tone in a weird sort of wonky way. But I had mentioned that I was working on reverbs that let you use it much more cleanly. So what I mean is something like this. Same thing. Except this particular form of reverb, which is the same algorithms in uh, clear coat, crunch coat, all of that stuff. Some of what this is about is using this stuff so that you can experiment with these various you know, variations on it all. This is that undersampling technique I was talking about, which I am now using on all of my new stuff going forward, like this. Whoop. Gotta turn that off. Ooh, it's me and you. I guess we are so that song is something that I'm working on, and I'll be putting out an album with this stuff, but I just thought it would be fun to hear a little bit of the new stuff that will be coming out. But what we've got in uh, Cream Coat is the ability to do, for instance, let's use a little tiny reverb here. I've got a pre-delay in this one. There's a real good reason to have that. And we can have a little tiny reverb that also has a regen that you can crank right up like this. But then if you use D-Res, you're going to start getting that effect that uh, D-Res 3 had, where you start rolling off more and more of the highs. And it will swoop the pitches of the reverb up and down. You can't hear it quite as easily with something like this, but then if you increase Regen, You can make it go a lot higher like that. Here's the thing. The reason I was real excited to do this is because I wanted to do something better for my vocals for the new songs I'm working on. They're not really new songs. They came out like a couple of years ago, but I've been so busy working on plugins I don't have time to work on music. Why? At least we're gonna and we have vocals like this. Why? At least we're gonna try. And I wanted to be able to make a reverb similar to stuff I was learning 
from studying, and maybe this should be the next timeless video, studying tracks like stuff off of David Bowie's Station to Station. Because I've always thought that Station to Station had an amazing vocal sound. Amazing. And I wasn't really quite sure what was going on there until I learned that that was at a studio where they had just got one of the first digital reverbs. That like 140 reverb from back in the day. This is not going to be an imitation of that reverb with like all of the graphics made to look like the old thing. But this is designed to be able to do the same thing I was hearing on station to station. And here's what I settled on for this same vocal track. At least we're gonna try, try to make it through and find. At least we're gonna try to make it through and find a way. What I was hearing when I re-listened to Station to Station was this really intense, kind of fake sounding, kind of boxy and solid, um, but dark room sound. It sounded like a cheesy room sound, but it had really short regeneration. And what I mean by that is here. Here is uh, all dry. I, at least we're gonna try and wet to make it through and find a way. But here's Ooh, it's me and you. I guess we always That's what I was hearing on station to station this extremely intense pre-delay and then nothing in the way of regen. And it would make a sound that was like a room sound. But, and this, this classic reverb did indeed have pre-delay, had all this stuff. And yet the uh, darkness of it indicated that it wasn't like I, at least we're gonna try to make a super high resolution sound. Again, if you use larger select, it will stretch out the reverb a little bit more. But the idea here is coming up with a vocal reverb that does the same thing in terms of acting almost as tight as a slapback, having that density and thickness of the really primitive early digital reverbs, but with the darkness of the really primitive early digital reverbs. Kind of like this. I, at least we're gonna try to make it through and find a way. We can sit this sound well in the back and make a reverb sound that has a lot of space to it. It has the whole reverb thing, like let's do drums again. Now, if you added Regen, you have a big, deep reverb sound. We could even do a very large option for reverb in this. And turn it into a super primitive, super sustainy sound. Cream Coat can now do this, too. Which is honestly a pretty darn good deep space reverb. And that's because this particular one what it's doing is using the same thing that we had in uh, D-Res 3, but unlike with Crunch Code, because you can also do something like this with Crunch Code, all of the D-Res options are set to not have the funny artifact, so they're kind of vaguely realistic sounding. And so we can do this.
because we're using DRES to slow down all of the reverbs to make them bigger, but they're still tight little ambiences, just, just slowed. And that causes it to make sort of the larger ambient sound. And because it's using that uh, DRES3 algorithm that we've got on last week's DRES3, but set up so that it has to be accurately, it, it doesn't have the funny high frequency artifact that you can get out of DRES3. So we can do this. And you can hear just the barest hint of the artifact. But it's mostly just a deep reverb sound. And again, this is this is all with the regen just doing its thing. I don't have it like locked into a single buffer. It's just recirculating. This is a live reverb that we can add other little bits of things to. This. You can't actually hear that because we're running drums into it. And the thing about the drums is this is all a giant subsonic reverb now so maybe what we should do is feed voices into it like this and then we return the reverb the regen all the way up and now we've got another pad. Cream coat should be a lot of fun. I think there's possibility of having a lot of fun with this. Not even counting all the normal things you can do with it by using it as an ambient reverb. Using DRES to darken the tone of it and then using the pre-delay to sit it in the appropriate spot. So there you have it. Air Windows Cream Coat follows up immediately on Air Windows DRES 3, because like I said, I came up with the DRES algorithm because I was doing this, because I needed to make my reverbs act like this going forwards. So why wait? Enjoy Cream Coat 3. I mean, if you get confused by trying to remember which one's clear coat and which one's crunch coat and which one's cream coat, yeah, I am fumbling that myself. But the point is you can use this. And I hope you have a lot of fun doing so. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.